Evening everybody, how's it going tonight? Um, haven't shot a video in a while. Figured I better get back to that. <laughs> um, tonight I'm gonna talk about, it's starting to get close to heating season. Um, you know, we've gone over this in class a little bit, but just a little refresher here, so you have something to come back and look at. Um, we're gonna go over how to test defrost. Um, we're gonna test defrost on a Goodman today, um, two ton heat pump, but it's gonna be mostly, it's gonna be really the same. Um, every brand has their quirks and their differences, um, you know, but it's gonna be roughly the same um, on most brands that you that you do it on. So uh, we're gonna get set up and let's dive into it. Okay guys, here we are, it's all set up. We got the S-Mans here running. We're running in heating mode. Again, a quick way to check that we're running in heating mode, and not the most accurate test. I'm gonna come over here and Grab the suction line, which is normally the suction line. Now is the discharge line, so it's hot instead of cold. So I know we're sending the hot gas inside the house to heat. Okay, I'm also hooked up to the true suction port, so I can get my true suction reading there. And that ten, that saturation, vapor saturation temperature, about 25 degrees. That's remember, that's where our refrigerant is boiling in this outdoor unit. Okay. Now on any good maintenance on a heat pump test, when you're working on a heat pump, you're always gonna to wanna to check defrost. Um, and what a lot of guys will do is they'll come over to here. There's two things that we need for defrost. And right now you can see I got my, I got my probes hooked up across the defrost thermostat. And I'm showing 26 volts, that switch is open, okay? Two things for defrost. In order to initiate defrost, that switch needs to close on a temperature drop, meaning this coil gets cold. I'm not sure what the rating is on this one. Uh, every switch is a little different. But when this coil gets cold enough, where this switch is set, that switch will close, telling the board that the coil's cold. One thing is satisfied. The other thing that will need to be satisfied in order for to initiate defrost is our timer there. You can see there, there's on those little dip switches, there's 30, 60, 90. Those are times. Right now it's set to 60 minutes. So after 60 minutes of run time, okay, run time meaning if it runs for 15 minutes and then shuts off for 10, it logs 15 minutes of run time. Once it's run for 60 minutes, total run time, the board will then verify this switch. And if this switch is closed, and the timer has ran out, the unit will initiate defrost. If the timer runs out and it looks for this switch and this switch is still open, the timer will reset and it will run for another 60 minutes or whatever it's set for, okay? So as technicians on a heating call, on a maintenance, we wanna verify that that switch closes and opens. Now what a lot of guys will do is they'll just come right over here like I have my meter probes, but they'll use a jump wire and they'll just jump that defrost thermostat switch and make that board think that that switch is closed just by jumping it. And that's all good. I mean, we're going to be able to test defrost that way. But the problem is, is I'm not testing that switch at all when I do that. I'm completely bypassing the switch. I'm not verifying that the switch is closing on its own. And I'm not verifying that the switch is opening and bringing the unit out of defrost when the coil gets to a certain temperature. Now remember what defrost is. Defrost is this heat pump going into cooling mode. The reversing valve is going to switch and send the hot gas out to this outdoor unit and melt that ice. Now the rule of thumb, what I've always been taught, is I don't want to see that temperature my saturation temperature on the high side or my condensing temperature get above 130. And the reason for that is, right now we're dealing with an R410A system. Uh, doesn't make any better. We're dealing with an R410A system at 130 degrees saturation temperature. That's almost, not quite, but almost 500 pounds of pressure. I mean, we're getting, we're getting close to the high pressure safeties at that point. So I want to see this thing come out at 100, you know, under 130 degrees. It, hopefully it comes out well below that. 
uh, but I've always been taught not to let it go over that. So I want to I want to verify that that switch closes on its own, and then it opens when it's time, when the coil is hot enough and the ice has been melted, and then brings this thing out of defrost before it trips on high head pressure. So how are we gonna do that? How are we gonna naturally do it? Right now it's a nice, again, we're in the training lab, okay? It's a nice, you know, thermostat set. It's a nice 70 degrees in here, not really heating weather. How are we gonna get this coil cold? Well, we're gonna be real careful, use our safety practices, but I'm gonna pull the fan lead. Tuck it in here so it doesn't move around. Now what that's going to do is, and I'm going to monitor my switch. My switch is still open. I got my probes across it. Now remember, we're evaporating out here in heating mode. So when I'm not moving any heat over the coil, which I'm not at right at the moment because I just shut off the fan, I'm going to start to drop that suction pressure and temperature, and we can see it's already happening. I'm going to simulate it being cold outside and I'm going to let this switch close naturally. So I'm going to verify that the switch actually closes when I want it to, when it, you know, when it gets cold outside. Okay, dropping down nice and low on the pressure. Come over here. Well, we have zero volts. Across my defrost switch, that means that switch is closed. I have now verified that that switch will close on its own. Now I'm going to force defrost. Second part of defrost is the timer. And in order to bypass the timer, I'm just going to jump those two test leads right there, those two test terminals, and speed up the clock. And we'll initiate defrost. Now, as soon as I initiate defrost, I'm gonna plug my fan back in because I also want to verify that my fan stays off during defrost. So let's give it a try. Again, my switch is closed, zero volts. stayed off leads back in I'm just gonna do a quick check again just to verify that I'm going into cooling mode and this pipe is cooling off it's not hot anymore it's now become the suction line once again because now we are sending the hot gas back out to this unit to melt the ice now we're gonna watch now that our fans not work running now this is the condenser we're going to start to heat this coil up, which is what we want. We want to get rid of that ice. So I'm going to start watching my high side saturation temperature. I want to verify that this thing, this switch, which is still closed, opens before I get over 130 degrees and we get close to tripping on high head pressure. Let's see what it comes out here. We're at 110, 111, 112. 115, 116 degrees, switch opens up. My fan comes back on. Switch is open. It came out at 116 degrees. We are now going to verify again that we are back in heating. This is getting hot again, so we are now, this is now our discharge line once again, sending heat back into the house. So on a five minute test, letting that close, that switch close naturally and open naturally as the heat rose in defrost, we verified that that switch is good. It brings the defrost, it closes. It brings the defrost, it opens and brings the unit out of defrost before we get close to dangerous conditions for the equipment at high pressure. We've also verified this board that the fan relay is operating properly because it kept the, it turned the fan off during defrost. And then after defrost, brought the fan back on. All those checks we just verified 
with a five minute test. As opposed to just jumping those two leads and making sure things happen. Just jumping those two leads and forcing defrost. That is not what we want to do, guys. We want to be as thorough as possible and make sure that this thing operates just like we want it to. Good test. Switch open. Pressure's returning to normal. In heating mode. Good to go. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. A um, little bit of information in there. Hopefully it'll make sense. Again, in class, ask away, ask all the questions you want. We'll definitely go over it. Um, but yeah, do it in as thorough in, as thorough as possible in the field. It's gonna save you time. It's gonna make your customers a lot more happy. Um, you're gonna be a better technician in the end. So um, that's it for this one. We'll see you on the next one.